as we gather in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, dear people of God. As most of you know, I was raised in the mountains of western North Carolina, and they are stunningly beautiful. And yes, I plan to move to the beach to get away from the snow in the mountains of western North Carolina. But when I was growing up, my parents had a big deck on the back of their house, and from there we could see cars driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Plus, Mom and Dad's house was at the bottom of a, or the foot of a mountain, and as a young boy and a teenager, I could climb that mountain and enjoy mountaintop views. Mountaintop views give us refreshing new perspectives on the world we see every day. And in our text for today's sermon from Ephesians and Romans, the Apostle Paul has climbed to the top, the mountaintop of God's mercy. And as he looks around, Paul realizes that life can never be the same again for Christ followers. Therefore, the Apostle makes his plea to us. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy to offer yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. What a view we have if we're willing to take a good, long look using God's word. What a view we have. In the first few chapters of the book of Romans, we're given that long, hard look at human depravity and sin. Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gives a careful listing of the many sins that have pushed people away from God. And Paul ends this list by saying, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Sin and rebellion marks all people. It is not a pretty picture. It is not a good view at all, but it is a true view of our hearts and the world around us. With that glimpse into the dark, tangled jungle of sin, how refreshing it is to be lifted up and to rest on the mountaintop of God's great mercy. How precious is the view that St. Paul provides as he shows us God's saving action in Christ Jesus. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Step by step, the apostle is leading us up the mountain so that we can view God's mercy and love. Our Heavenly Father, by the redemption that came by Jesus the Savior, is solely by his grace. Salvation is a totally free gift. And now God reaches out to all people infected by sin, yet deeply loved by him. Paul wants us to see the width and the breadth and the height of God's love and to breathe deeply the fresh air of his forgiveness and mercy. He wants us to take a hard, long look at all that God has done for us, what it costs God to claim us as his forgiven people. As we view what our Lord has accomplished for us from the mountaintop of God's mercy, which changes our perspective of ourselves, the Apostle Paul now guides our response to God's love and grace when he writes, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. This view of God's mercy motivates our stewardship response to his love and care. Recall what I said in my sermon on September 30th. We are God's stewards. And as God's stewards, understand that all of life is a gift, not just our money, our bank accounts, our stocks, bonds, and CDs. It includes the offering of our time, our talents, and abilities. 
Our response to God's mercy should be to offer our whole being, all that we have and are, for the Lord's purpose. You might recall what Pastor Ben once said when he was here and he was giving a stewardship sermon. He said, God calls us to stand in the offering plate, to give ourselves totally to the Lord. And yes, it's difficult to live this out in a sinful world as we fight Satan, our sinful flesh, and the world's misguided ways. Yet the apostle reminds us that we are led to offer ourselves as living sacrifices because God's mercy has redeemed us from sin. That mercy has begun to renew our minds and our heart so that we can be used in ways that are holy and acceptable to God by daily recalling our baptism, by renewing ourselves through God's holy word, by receiving the forgiveness and strength in the sacrament of the altar, by fervent and frequent prayer, through fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we do not have to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. God has called and gifted each of us. And the challenge of our stewardship life is to be about the mission and ministry opportunities that God presents in our homes, in our employment, in and through our congregation as we travel all of life. God presents a multitude of options for service. In fact, the possibilities are endless. In today's epistle lesson from Galatians, uh, excuse me, from Ephesians, Paul reminds us that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Note that word, workmanship. Say it together, workmanship. That word comes from the Greek poema, from which we get the word poem. But 2,000 years ago, this could refer to any artistic work. It literally means a work of art or a masterpiece. If we are God's workmanship, then you and I are a masterpiece that our God has created. And when one creates a masterpiece, that artistic work is greatly valued because the artist has taken the piece from nothingness to one of great beauty and value. Isaiah 64, 3 proclaims, But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. How many here have ever worked with clay on a pottery wheel? Anybody ever done that? Yeah. Wasn't it easy? No. <laughs> I can remember sitting in junior high art class, sitting behind the pottery wheel, dipping my hands in the water with the expectation of forming that lump into a beautiful vase, a pitcher, or a bowl. But I always managed to get the clay off center or have the clay go too thin, and it would collapse, and I would end up with the ever so lovely ashtray. We are God's workmanship. He is the potter crafting out of ordinary clay a masterpiece. Think about that. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. All of us to be used for the sake of his kingdom and his purposes. When talking about our time, talent, skills, and abilities, our action in the Lord's name, we must always realize what God's grace has done for us. There is nothing in history, past or future, like the grace of God. It is a gift out of the greatest love ever shown this world. Without the free gift of Jesus Christ, we are nothing more than a lump of clay. Yet by grace through faith in Jesus as our only Savior, from sin, death, and devil, we are recreated to be the very hands, the feet, and the mouth of God useful to do good works. This is what Paul reminds us in our monthly memory verse, which we practiced just a few minutes ago, but now I would like to share in a little bit more modern translation, and I'd like us to say it together. 
God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything more than ready to do what needs to be done. Our works, our talents, our time are all a byproduct of what God has created through faith in Jesus Christ. God desires to use us, his masterpiece vessels, to show forth his love in lives of giving, encouraging, and good works. A life of being God's stewards, his managers, his caretakers. God uses each and every one of us every day. And our use of time, talents, and abilities don't have to be some sort of grandiose kind of work. It may be doing our best at our job. It could be raising godly children, praying faithfully for others, sharing our faith in word and deed, teaching Sunday school, taking meals to the sick, driving senior citizens to doctor's appointments, buying extra items for our Thanksgiving food drive or to support port our ministry to the homeless in Hungary. It could be sending a card to a struggling friend or a shut-in, taking time to visit those people. It could be a phone call, a smile, a listening ear, a genuine hello, a warm hug, giving of your time and talents to the church and others. You are God's workmanship. He has created all of us for a purpose behind our faith, grace-filled faith. Idleness is not an option in the lives of God's stewards. Therefore, we come back to our question, and you've seen and heard this before. Are you a bib Christian, or are you a apron Christian? You've heard that before. Are you a Christian who expects to be served? Are you a Christian who has heard the call of Jesus Christ who said, I'm among you? as one who serves. When you came in today or when you leave today, you'll receive a time and talent sheet. We'd like every member to have one. I want you to take it home. I want you to pray about it, and I'd like you to fill it out and then bring it back next Sunday to be offered to the Lord. Day by day, we travel a path covered with the ordinary, mundane scenery of life. But as we move along, God's mercy lifts us to new heights as we discover anew his love, his grace, his forgiveness, his day-by-day -day care. There our God blesses us as his masterpieces and moves us to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we give you hearty thanks. We cannot begin to say thank you enough for the gift of your son, Jesus, and that through him you love us, care for us, you grant us salvation, you give us your grace and forgiveness. We thank you that we are your masterpieces and that you will use us for the sake of your kingdom in innumerable ways. May our hearts be open always to the leading of your spirit to be about your purposes. This we ask in Jesus' name.